My name's Matt, I'm the custody officer, I'm in charge. I'm not involved in the investigation. You've been arrested on suspicion of possession of bullets, uh, ammunition and possession of intent to supply. Class B. Class B, anything else? No, that's it. Alright, your detention's not been authorised yet, but I can authorise a search of you under section 54 of PACE. Stand up. Mate, you're good enough to... The CCTV footage of the murder of Sergeant Matt Rattana in Croydon in 2020 has been released by the police. This is following the trial for Luis de Souza, who is 25 years old now, but was 23 at the time, that he shot Sergeant Rattana dead inside a custody block. Matt Rattana was the custody sergeant at the time and the police have now released the footage of the moment that he was shot and also the moments that led up to the shooting which include the two officers that arrested him and the search that took place before he went to the cell. When this story first broke a lot of people were confused because everybody here in the UK knows the strict rules that they have when they search people before they go into a police station. So it is a big mystery as to how we managed to get the gun into the police station and also how we managed to shoot him while he was handcuffed and this is why this video is so important because it shows added context as well and the procedures that were followed and also yourself you can try to point out anything that you believe may have been done incorrectly. During the trial that is ongoing at the moment they have revealed that he was shot with an antique revolver that Louis had brought offline and he had converted himself and made bullets. Video footage was also released of his arrest as well and it shows the police officers that were dealing with him and the reason as to why they stopped him. He was walking down London Road on the 25th of September 2020 when he was stopped by police at 1.30am because they believed that he was acting suspiciously. He was carrying a duffel bag and of course everybody was wearing masks at this point. It was the middle of lockdown and Covid but at the same time the police officer believed that he looked suspicious. When they started to talk to him, Louis confessed that he had cannabis inside his bag and his English was very good as well. But later on in the police station, he started to struggle to communicate to some of the officers. Upon searching him, they discovered ammunition, but he was handcuffed at the time of the search. And the officers did do quite a thorough search, to be fair. But the part where they believe he held his gun was in a holster that was under his armpit. And this must have been either overlooked or mistakenly not felt at the time when they were searching him. But to be fair, the officers were quite reasonable when they were dis talking to him. And they explained themselves very clearly. And it was also stated in the custody block that he should be searched again due to the fact that they found bullets on him. And this is what was about to occur before he shot Sergeant Matt Rattana dead after he fired four bullets. Now, I'll, take, I'll take it and have a look in a minute, all right? The reason is there's a lot of burglaries in this area, okay? It's half one in the morning. I don't know who you are. You've probably got a totally legitimate excuse, all right? But at the moment, you're walking down the road with a duffel bag, all right? Which I, which I believe may have stuff going to quick to do a burglary, all right? So I'm just going to search you. This pocket. I've got my ID. Perfect. Okay, that's fine. Don't, don't put your hands in your pockets. Hey, hello. Don't put your hands in your pockets, okay? You okay? You're just going to be searched, mate. You're not under arrest. I just need to search you. You okay? All right. Just a bit nervous, yeah? Okay. Are they expecting you home? Okay, that's fine. All right. That's fine. Okay. okay, how much have you got in there? I've got maybe three or so uh, 
okay? All right. We're still going to have to search you, all right? Yeah. So just pass me your phone and your mask, okay? All my concern is at the moment is if you've got anything on that's going to hurt me or you. Any needles, any razor blades, anything like that. Okay, fine. Because you just told me you've got drugs on you, I'm just going to have to put you in handcuffs while I search you. The reason... What's the matter? So the reason for that is people try and do silly things when we search them. They try and hurt themselves. They try and hurt police officers. Okay. All right? Can you tell me it's the car, please? Why? Don't resist. Listen to me very carefully. I know, I know. Don't resist. I'm putting you in the car, but put the yeah, first, yeah? Okay. Is it someone's watching us? Or? Yeah, and take, take the back Why do you want us to sit you in the car? I'm just worried, please. Why? Why are you worried? Just... Do you think your parents might see? No. Um... Right, get in the car, mate. Control, can I create a cab for a, uh, a stop of a person on London Road, junction with Pollard Hill North, please? Don't put your hands in your pockets. Don't do that again. Do you understand? Do you understand? That's the third time you've done that, and I've told you not to. Next time, listen to me, next time you're going to be handcuffed to the back. All right? Like three times I've asked you. You speak perfectly good English. Stop doing it. Received. At the moment, I've tried to do you a favour by taking you off the street. You've not told me why. I'm just saving you a little bit of embarrassment. Now you've reached into... Stop talking. You've now reached into your pockets three times and I've told you not to, right? You've now told me you've got drugs on you when I thought you might have had some sort of tool on you to burgle someone's house. So now I'm going to search you stood right here, all right? Because I don't know what else you've got on you and I think there's more to this story than you're letting on despite having drugs on you, all right? Okay, so I asked you earlier, I'm not, I'm not too sure what the answer was. Have you got anything on you, like, sharp that can hurt me or you? No. No? Yeah, canisters. Oh. Oh. Right, at the moment, I'm right. placing you under arrest for possession of what I believe to be bullets, right? Could I have van and cell space for one man adult arrested for possession of what I believe to be bullets on London Road, junction with Pollard Hill North? One five six seven. Needs to search the back of him. Hey, Ryan, you've got a self scar back with me, look. Just say receive for me. Just hold his jacket up for me. We're changing to a to rear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You got one pair of trousers on? I have a second pair of thermals. Right, okay. Okay, I'm just going to search your inside leg. Spread your legs slightly for me, thank you. Where'd you get the boots from? Yeah, all good.
The prosecution said that he pulled the trigger deliberately four times while he was handcuffed. And the first and second shot hit Sergeant Ritana in the chest. The third shot hit the wall and the fourth shot hit Louis in his neck and this has left him disabled. He has arrived in court in a wheelchair. De Souza from Surrey denies murder and the defence told the trial at the Crown Court that he was suffering an autistic meltdown at the time of the shooting and did not mean or want to kill Sergeant Ritana. De Souza was taken from London Road in the early hours of the morning and put in the back of a police car and taken to Windmill Road at Croydon Police Station. He shot Matt Ratana dead half an hour later at 2am. The footage then shows the police wrestling with him, two officers, a male and a female. The female tries to taser him and the other and kick the gun away. But at this point, De Souza is laying on the gun. And this is when the fourth shot went off. Just before the taser was discharged, it was revealed in court. They allege that De Souza made the bullets for an antique revolver. And he concealed it in a holster and got hold of it when he was handcuffed and shot the officer dead. The prosecution told the court that he was holding the gun in his right hand and fired at the chest of Sergeant Ritana and the second shot hit Matt in the leg but was not the fatal wound the chest shot was. The police officers jumped on him and tried to detain him. The Crown's barrister said the actions of Louis and the male officer he was struggling with affected where the gun was pointing and the actions combined made the gun point up and the third shot went into the ceiling. As the gun was raised, De Souza fired again and the final shot hit him south in the neck. And this has caused him brain damage. It has been revealed in court. The jury has been allowed to fire the gun using blank rounds inside the court that has took place recently. And this was to give him an idea of how powerful the gun was and also how easily it would have been for him to kill Sergeant Matt Ritana. Forensic science and ballistic expert Anthony Miller explained that the gun was loaded with dummy bullets inside the courtroom to demonstrate exactly what had happened. And Mr Miller told the court he examined the revolver and ammunition that was recovered at the scene and the prosecution asked if the gun could go off by accident and he said that he undertook vigorous testing and not once did the gun go off accidentally. At the time of the offence, Louis was living in Banstead in a flat inside a farm in Surrey and they said that he obtained the gun on the internet in June 2020. So this was only a few months before he'd been stopped with it while he was wandering the streets at 1.30am with a duffel bag. It just makes you wonder what Louis was actually planning. Why did he have this gun? He just seemed so nervous and he only had three grams of cannabis on him at the time. He wasn't carrying a large amount of drugs so he wasn't potentially selling drugs by the looks of things he just had personal use he wasn't wearing a load of expensive clothes so it just makes you wonder what on earth he was actually planning and what his mental state was at the time and now he's got to suffer with the fact that he's brain damaged for the rest of his life and at the time that he entered in court as well he was he had his arm in a sling so this may be because of some injury that he suffered in prison or maybe self-inflicted maybe he's injuring himself in prison so that definitely still leaves a lot of unanswered questions about who Louis was and what his actual plans were with the gun. Maybe this will be revealed later on in the trial, but at the moment they've revealed how serious the situation was and how quickly it escalated and how deadly it ended up. So I really appreciate you joining me for this update and I'll definitely keep you updated on the outcome of the trial. And I really want to hear what people have to say on this story and also all the other uploads that I've done this week. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.